Good afternoon. I'm Dia Davidson. I'm Chris Goodman. Thank you for joining us. We'll get to the big story in just a minute. First, though, breaking news out of Woodford County. This is where an inmate has escaped from a jail van. Yeah, putting all Woodford County schools on lockdown. Travis Thompson joins us now by phone with the very latest. Well, yeah, Dia, we are standing near the Bluegrass Parkway and Route 33 in Woodford County. A very active scene here. And police are now telling us it is 37-year-old Derek Capozzi, who had been uh, convicted of uh, attempted murder of a corrections officer. Well, the news of Capozzi's escape has made its way up to Massachusetts, where Capozzi has long been suspected of being a member of a well-known Italian mob. Jamie Weiss is in the LEX 18 newsroom to continue our big story team coverage. The U.S. Marshal Service in Boston has been notified about Capozzi's escape. We've spent the last several hours doing a lot of digging into the criminal history of Derek Capozzi, and it definitely is disturbing. Most notably, Capozzi was sentenced in 2005 for his involvement in the murder of a 19-year-old girl in Boston. Now, some 13 hours later, he's still on the run, but police seem to be, at times, closing in. LAX 18's Jamie Weiss is live on Military Pike, where the search has intensified in the last few hours. Jamie. Yeah, that's right. The search for escaped federal inmate Derek Capozzi has definitely intensified in the last hour, specifically here in the Little Texas area. This is where police have uh, gathered over the last hour. Uh, it was about 10 o'clock that they got a call that Capozzi may have overpowered someone and stolen their vehicle. They eventually found that vehicle, found that to not be the case, but this was the last possible sighting of him. That is why police are back out here. I have seen them with their bulletproof vests on. They have some night vision equipment I have seen them wearing along with their canine dogs. And you can probably hear above me, Air One is back up in the air searching for Capozzi. I was over here doing a little muskrat hunting earlier and I uh, had my 12 gauge on my side and I heard about the escapee from BG, uh, BG Parkway. And I saw a white male. As soon as I looked up, he took off running. He had a white t-shirt on and uh, I couldn't tell if they were black boots or not. Kind of skinny, shaved head, just took off running up the hillside. Yeah, this afternoon, police say they are still looking for escaped federal inmate Derek Capozzi. That's what they were doing yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, and into the early morning hours, running on any calls of possible sightings of Capozzi. However, he is not yet in custody, and the fact that he has not been found, the fact that he is not back in jail, is not sitting well uh, with one of his victim's mothers. The authorities are, you know, are out there, and I think they will do everything they can possibly do. I know the authorities here never gave up. In all those years, from, you know, from the, the very beginning in 1996, they never gave up. And I can, I can only imagine that the authorities out there would be doing the same. They, they won't give up until they find him. And the news of Capozzi's escape is especially difficult this time of year. Doreen Henderson, Aislinn's mother, says that tomorrow would have been her birthday. Today, it's been a nonstop, all-out search for escaped federal inmate Derek Capozzi. Right now, Air One from the Lexington Police Department is circling this field here. We're just off Camden Avenue in Versailles. Also in this field, you've got police officers, U.S. Marshals searching the area. This is one of two places where people have called in possible sightings of Capozzi. That's tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 5. Another normal day in another quiet Woodford County neighborhood was disrupted this afternoon. About 1 o'clock, police focused their search for escaped federal inmate Derek Capozzi on the Huntertown neighborhood. I was heading to the gym and I was making it right out of my neighborhood and saw a guy running up Huntertown Road in a khaki pants and t-shirt and he was cutting through backyards. Too scared to show his face, that man wasn't the only one trying to get through the day when they ran across Capozzi. When I came down Huntertown Road, um, he crossed, he was running and he crossed the road in front of me and I probably would not have noticed him had he not been running. It just seemed he wasn't dressed for a jog. The sighting was more shock than anything for Melinda McCauley. I was hoping he had left actually our area. Police searched houses and eventually moved across town to Camden Avenue, where they believe Capozzi may have hitched a ride to this field right behind Annabelle Long's home. Our chickens started 
jumping around, flopping around, and the dog started barking. Long started her own search. We just started looking around. We looked in that old building and walked back and looked at the creek bank, and there were some foot tracks across that gate back there, you know, and there's never anyone in there. But just like Huntertown, the manhunt in that area came up empty, too. Now, there's been a lot of concern throughout these neighborhoods when they see the police move in. And I know talking to some of those people who say they saw Kaposi, they were very shaken up by that. And police are still advising you need to be cautious. Kaposi is considered dangerous. Keep your doors locked. Uh, stay vigilant. And if you see anything, call 911. Cover the news live in Woodford County from the LEX 18 mobile newsroom. Back to you. The intense manhunt for a dangerous criminal is over, thanks in part to two sharp-eyed Woodford County men. Derek Capozzi was caught earlier this evening near Kentucky Avenue. Janice Park is live in for sales tonight to begin our team coverage of the big story. Janice. Hi, Kristen. Well, we've been approached by so many people in the community who say they are so happy and relieved that federal inmate Derek Capozzi has been captured, and it's all thanks to two very courageous brothers. And all of this was captured by our LEX 18 News cameras. Here's more in tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 11. LEX 18 News was there when alleged mafia member Derek Capozzi was caught. You can see a glimpse of him as he gets into this police car. It's the end to a three day manhunt by land and air that has terrified an entire community. He's been spotted all around the Dairy Queen, farms, soccer fields. But how this extremely dangerous man was caught is a whole nother story. I, like I guess I just played it cool and walked back out there. Brothers Alfred Marmalejo and Philip Bryant came to this wooded area near their work with the intent of finding Derek Capozzi. What's this? Cookies, man. Eastern baseball bat. Yeah, me and my brother-in-law right here. Armed with so, that wow. baseball bat. We just got a wild hair of his ass. We knew he's out here on the run, so we we uh, we thought uh, there's a possibility he could be up here, so we came out here looking for him. There he was. They called 911, and the rest is history. Just nervous a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. We've been, we been joking we around. Some money, we're broke. Yeah, man. we thought there was a hundred thousand dollar reward. That's why we came out here looking for him. And U.S. Marshals say the reason Capozzi was caught was because so many citizens had called in with tips. And tonight they want to say a very big thank you. For now, we're covering the news live in Woodford County from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom. Kristen, back to you. The two men who finally helped police get their hands on fugitive Derek Capozzi are being honored tonight by the city of Versailles. Jamie Weiss joins us live from Woodford County with the latest. It was just about 20 minutes ago that the city council here in Versailles took a break from their regular meeting to honor the two men who finally found Derek Capozzi's hideout. It was their call to 911 that ended the three day manhunt. By day three of what seemed to be a never ending game of hide and seek between fugitive Derek Capozzi and police in Woodford County, the 911 calls from people spotting the escaped federal inmate were rolling in non-stop. I live in Lane G, right behind, uh, right by the water tower, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw somebody running towards the train tracks. And, now I didn't, I'm not saying this, whoever it is, it's on TV or whatever, but I'm just letting y'all know that I saw somebody running, and I don't see why somebody at 1:30. Police were out after every call, getting helicopters right on top of every sighting. But somehow, Capozzi was still just out of reach until brothers-in-law Alfred Marmaleo and Philip Bryant picked up the phone. 911, where's your emergency? Hey, I think a dude's laying over here by the railroad tracks. I went up in here. He's over around over here by Central Kentucky Stairs. Mm -hmm. Duffy Avenue. You might want to send somebody over before he takes off running. Okay. That's him. This time, it wasn't a call about Capozzi running by. It was one of him being right there in front of them. Did you see, like, can you still see him or did he take off somewhere? No, he's kind of laying down. It's like him. Yeah. I kind of walked back the out of there. I was. You got you. <laughs> um, but he is still, he's laying there right behind Central Kentucky Stairs. Yeah, it's up a little bit, real close to the tracks right there. It appears while the cruisers and choppers were circling, Capozzi had set up camp under some trees and brush to wait them out. It did work for a while, but finally, one of the calls to dispatch ended everything. Capozzi couldn't hide anymore.
And because he was found by those two men, Marmaleo and Bryant, were just given keys to the city by the mayor before the city council meeting started. Uh, the mayor wanted to take a second out to say how grateful he is to the police department, to the sheriff's department, and grateful for how the community came together during this time, during this search for Kaposi, really over the last several days. In a way, Kaposi has been almost terrorizing this community. Everybody was wondering where was he, what could he do, and all those questions did not come to an end until those two brothers-in-law found him uh, where they did off Kentucky Avenue. Carver the News live in Woodford County from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom. Back to you.